Yes, yes, so hell is here. Today we have Gabriel Enrique with All By Myself. He has put in the video title that it's a cover of Celine Dion's version, which is useful to know because Celine Dion, her version is a cover of Eric Carmen's song. And Eric Carmen's original song is heavily influenced by Rachmaninoff's Piano Concerto Number no. 2 in C minor. <laughs> If you've seen my other videos, you know sometimes I like to compare cover songs to their original versions so we can really see what the cover artist does to make their performance their own, to make it unique. As Gabrielle has explicitly stated that this is a cover of Celine Dion's version, if I make any comparisons, I'll try to just compare to her version and not Eric Carmen's original song. So in terms of the song itself, I don't think I need to say too much. It's one of those songs that everyone knows or has probably at least heard once in their life. In my previous reactions to Gabrielle, which have been covers, he's tended to use the exact same arrangement in terms of musical accompaniment and instrumentation as the song he's covering or the version of the song he's covering. So I'll be looking out to see what he does here. And yeah, I mean, it's a very expressive song. Celine Dion, with her powerful voice, has some very high belts in there. She has that chest voice that can really, really excel to heights. And Gabriel, he has a super impressive voice, particularly his higher register. So I'm looking forward to hear what choices he makes with this cover. So without further ado, let's get straight into when I was young, I never needed anyone. Make your love just for fun. Those days are gone. Leave it Well, I mean, there we go. What a voice of his. Yeah, I'm excited to hear the rest of this. We know exactly what he's capable of. I'm sure there'll probably be as what we might call a madness or two in there. Well, that was just the introduction part. There's some things I'd like to point out. If you don't want to hear my analysis on what we've just listened to, you can go to the timestamp here. First things first, Gabrielle is singing in the key of G, whereas Celine Dion's version is in the key of A. So he's singing slightly lower than she is. This makes complete sense because Celine Dion has a very high and powerful voice, especially her chest voice, for a woman. Gabrielle could easily take it down much more than he is. So, I mean, it's still very impressive the key he's singing in here. And I'm sure it will show off his upper registers very well. In terms of the arrangement, the musical accompaniment that Gabriel is using, it's very, very similar to Celine Dion's version, but it's not exactly the same. I thought he might have just taken the instrumentation from Celine Dion's version and transposed it down into the correct key, which is very easily doable in a lot of software these days. An example of a slight difference would be this bit. After he sings the word one, you'll notice how we can hear the individual notes in the piano accompaniment. Mm compared to Celine Dion's version, where the accompaniment is strictly chordal. Also, in her version, we can hear some faint vocal oohs in the background, very, very lightly. Making love. I mean, they sound like oohs, they could be a synth or something. I'm listening back to Gabrielle's version, I can't actually tell if we can hear those oo sounding things. Making love. 
Not sure, but either way, there are some slight differences. So at this point, our first impressions are that Gabrielle's accompaniment is slightly more reduced. There's a bit less going on in general. And because of this, it sounds a bit more raw, which means that his voice is more exposed so we can focus on it easier. And again, another example with the backing accompaniment, how it's slightly different to Celine Dion's version. This means that his main instrument to create his own version, to create all these differences to the song that he's covering, is his own voice because we don't have all these other instruments like we get in Celine Dion's version and we therefore can't rely on other instrumental techniques to create a different sound. Gabrielle's voice is the real tool here, the real thing that we're focusing on. So on this note, let's move back a bit. There's this phrase that he sings here and I like how he chooses to use no vibrato until the last word of the phrase which is fun. Make you love her just for fun it's a simpler sound, it's a bit more of a flat sound in terms of texture and it contrasts the vibrato that we get on the last word. When you have a contrast, it exaggerates the difference, so it also exaggerates the vibrato. I also get the impression it creates a more kind of lulling feeling, this slow moving motion. Like if we listen to it again on the word just, he grows into the note. Make you love her just for fun. Just another quick note on the instrumentation and the backing track. At this part, with the words Nobody's Home, there's a really prominent guitar part, which me, personally, I really like, so I'm listening out for it. Nobody's home. In Gabrielle's version, we don't get this. Nobody's home. For someone like me, who enjoys listening out for these other instrumental parts, because we don't get that, it means that there's less to listen out to. So again, it's more focus on Gabrielle's voice. For someone like Gabrielle with a voice like his, I think it's, you know, in general, probably a good idea to use these reduced backing tracks where there's less going on. It really allows for his voice to shine more and to have more of this wow factor. So we have him ready about to sing the first chorus. Yes, here we go. Now I've mentioned this in my previous Gabriel reactions, but there's something that I've noticed that he seems to like to do in order to show off his chest voice on the higher notes of these phrases. He sings the top note in his chest voice, in his full voice, and then as he moves downwards in pitch, he switches to his head voice. This naturally is counterintuitive, but especially depending on the phrase, I think it works really, really well. Naturally, if you're singing in your head voice as you move down, the sound will become weaker. And in your chest voice, as you move up in pitch, the sound will probably become stronger. So it also exaggerates the dynamic contrast between the two parts of that one phrase. Growing louder, strength towards the top, and then coming off a bit. Then we get the second time those words are sung, and it's kind of like the second climax of the chorus. The same line as before, just a bit higher in pitch. So now he goes up to this top C. <laughs> So it's this C here, it's high, that's this wow note for operatic tenors. He also adds in an additional note on his run downwards here before the final descent on self. So he does this. It's this note here that is an added note. Celine Dion doesn't have this note in there, she just goes. So by Gabrielle including one more note, it means that his jump down from here to here is smaller. It's five notes instead of six notes. This means it's easier to manage for him. Not that that would be a problem at all. We know that he can jump around like that very easily, but it's just a tiny bit less risky and also more variety in his vocal performance. All right, let's carry on from where we left off.
Well, that was nice, wasn't it? Those, those that, that really soft whistle note section. I'll come back to that in a bit. But yeah, some other cool bits from that little excerpt we just heard there. There's just one minute left, so we'll just go over what we've just heard of a few things that I want to point out, and then we'll carry on to the end. I like how he's getting in the zone here. You know, he's mentally preparing himself. We look at him, and we know that something great is probably coming. So then we get the chorus again. You know, yeah, he just has so much power behind that voice. I feel like this is a song that his voice is just suited perfectly for. Then when he sings it the second time round, last time we heard it, as I mentioned, he adds in one note before jumping down. This time he doesn't do that. So now he does jump down six notes instead of the previous five notes. Whilst this is the same as Celine Dion's version, it's different to what he has been singing previously. So he's making sure to keep variety within his performance. The fact that he did it different the first time means that he can now do what Celine Dion is doing and it's still different, it's not the same. Then after that we get this contrast between the super powerful climax of the phrase into this really smooth legato flowing uh, copying of the piano accompaniment. And he's also choosing to use no vibrato here, no voice wobbles. I feel that this really plays into this smooth flowing idea of the melodic line. Just some vibrato at the end and on one other note a little bit. By mimicking the piano, I mean, he could be singing in harmony with the piano, but he chooses to sing the exact same notes. So by doing this, he's exaggerating the rhythmic sameness that we hear. Every note is an equal rhythm. Da, 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 da. The purpose for this, to contrast what's about to come in the piano, the arpeggiated piano parts. And that's now also in compound time compared to common time. Compound time just means you think of it in terms of three instead of in terms of two. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, instead of one, two, one, two. And it's also kind of foreshadowing these whistle notes. I think it's a great touch him adding them in. One, that's a great talent of his. It always surprises people. But seeing this bit as whistle notes in Celine Dion's version, it's violins playing. So we do still hear the violins here, but his whistle notes are very much taking our attention away from them. If you can sing up there, why not? And usually we'd probably expect whistle notes to come at a really climactic moment of intense energy and power, but he's instead choosing to use them at a more relaxed and calming section of the song. It's a nice, very welcome little surprise for us, I think. All right, let's carry on now to the end. Yeah, that that is a powerful, that's a powerful voice. I thought he did some really, really nice things there. That's definitely one where you watch it and you just think, wow. All right, well, let's just go over some of that last section there before wrapping up. So from where we carried on, he then goes straight into the chorus again. This time the phrase is very much soft opening and ending with the power in the middle, kind of like this shape. Oh, 
starting quietly, finishing quietly, he's saving the power for the high notes for the middle. And, of course, he's saving the power as well for what's to come. <laughs> Boom. He goes up to that top D sharp. Absolutely mad. He sustains it so well, choosing not to use any vibrato up there. I was expecting him to put a little bit of vibrato towards the end of the note, but then he just comes off and then switches to the next note that is vibrato. It's a nice touch just coming off completely and then coming straight back in. Keeping us on our toes, you know, keeping us entertained. Then I like what he does here. He does some cool vocalizations where he repeats a phrase three times, but on the third repeat, he melodically adjusts it so it fits in with the rest of the music harmonically. We've had a key change now to move us up a bit so it's even higher than before. I don't understand how he gets up there in his chest voice. It, it really is crazy. And then we get this phrase where he sings this B up here. What a note. Again, he's going for no vibrato, this kind of texturally flatter sound, which makes the vibrato and the rapid conscious note changes for the second half of the phrase more noticeable. I get the impression that Gabriel seems to really like the idea of contrast, especially with in phrases. So this phrase we just heard, if we couple it with the next phrase, they outline a descending chromatic scale. If we take these two phrases down to their skeletons, that's what we hear. So let's hear that again. So he's moving down chromatically, step by step, as small as you can go, whilst adding in these vocal runs in between these notes to act as ornamentation. As mentioned earlier, we saw compound time in the piano, thinking in terms of three beats instead of two. We get that again with this next bit. One, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three. And then finally, to end a bit of contrast, he moves up to head voice on any, as we just heard, before this powerful, chest voice belted note on more. And again, the word more is itself split into two. First note, no vibrato, second note, vibrato. Yeah, what a voice, what a voice. I like a lot of what he did here. He didn't go too crazy with all the vocal runs and everything. Had some whistle notes in there as well. Just a great choice of song, I think. All right, let's leave it there. Thank you very much for watching. We'd appreciate a like and subscribe. If you enjoy my content and want to support me and join the community, you can do so by joining the Patreon or YouTube memberships linked below. And I will see you next time.